This is the Melly's Lab French Press. It's located in room B128, uh, the common equipment room on the first floor of the biology building. When you come to use it, you'll want to bring a couple things with you, some conicals to collect your sample, a rack, a couple beakers, uh, maybe a sharpie, and of course your cell culture. Um, everything else you need it will be in the room. If you look in the drawer just below the French press, pull out that top drawer, you'll see all the uh, parts of the cell where your bacteria will go, that steel apparatus on the left, and uh, some other stuff you'll need. I'll show you how to use and assemble these things in this video. Um, and then also in this video, I'll explain what all the gauges mean on the front of the machine and the numbers, and we'll set this thing up to lyse your bacteria gently and efficiently. Before I sh take you through the setup and operation of this in detail, I thought I'd show just what it looks like in action. This is a sped up version of the French press pressing on the cells. You can see uh, the big metal cylinder that has a tube coming out of it. That's where your cells go. And then there's a smaller metal cylinder coming out the top. That's the plunger. Um, that gray platform is slowly being raised up by uh, the hydraulic pump that drives the movement of that platform upwards. And that causes the plunger to be pressed down. So inside that big metal cylinder is where your bacteria go. And you can see me adjusting a little knob. That's a needle valve that prevents the bacteria from getting squirted out that tube. Uh, but you open it just a little bit so that uh, you maintain pressure inside the cylinder, but there's also uh, cells getting squirted out the tube so that you're uh, treating them with shear stress and depressurizing, and that causes them to pop open. Okay, uh, let's assemble the cell and load your sample. Uh, these are the three components. On the left is the piston, which I called the plunger earlier. Um, the big thing in the middle is the cell, and then the closure plug is up top. You'll want to probably store these in the cold room overnight, especially if you're doing protein purification. Otherwise, the heat from the French press operation will heat up your sample and could denature your protein. All right, now I'll show you how to assemble all the parts of the cell and get it ready to run. Um, in the top drawer, if you pull out the cell, it's pretty heavy, so get a firm grip on it. Um, and if you're storing it in the cold room, it's extra difficult to handle. Uh, on the top, you see this metal stem that, um, that locks the plunger in place, once you have that in place. And then the valve stem and outlet tube are uh, on the bottom, and we'll explain what those do. This is the piston or plunger. Uh, at the bottom is a rubber O-ring. You should inspect that and make sure that it has no cracks and has a smooth film of silicone grease on it. And same thing for the bottom closure plug that goes on the other side. It should also have a non-cracked, smooth, lubricated O-ring. Um, so uh, let's get these parts out and pick up the cell. Um, we want to turn this upside down. Uh, and place it on this three-prong tripod stand for assembly. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get that metal bar out of the way. Now I'm turning it around here to show you the valve stem. So once you have this thing in place, unscrew the valve stem all the way. It will take a little while, um, but inside the valve stem there's a small silicone ball bearing and that over time um, gets a little bit flattened and won't form a seal as well. So you'll find that when the pressure is uh, turned on, your stuff will leak out if this seal. So this you can't really see very well in the video. I'm gonna put a, a still in uh, right now, a close-up of that ball bearing. So can you see how it's a little bit flattened and smooshed on top? So now I'll show you how to replace that. So if you go in this box, um, there's a French press cell parts kit. There's a bag full of ball bearings in there. That's also where you find a cup of silicone grease and fresh O-rings, although I try to keep those in good shape. Um, they don't go bad as often. So um, to replace the ball bearing, you can use, use just your fingernails to pick it out, or you can use forceps. Just be really careful uh, not to touch the metal because this um, tip of the valve is very sensitive, so you don't want to damage it in any way. So I just picked it out with my fingernail there, um, and that can be thrown away, and then um, just go into the bag, get a new one, and it'll fit right into the tip, which has a 
concave end to it. There you go. It's as simple as that. Now screw it back in. You don't want to screw it all the way in because the next thing we'll do is load this thing with bacteria and you want to keep the valve open so that you can squirt extra air out the outlet valve and fill the cell completely before closing it. Alright, so now we're going to insert the uh, piston. Uh, the piston you'll see has a bunch of um, markings and settings for different volumes. It, for it works with 5, 10, 20, or 40 mils of culture volume. So you'll want to stick the piston in um, from the bottom side, and then that metal bar can be swung into place in one of those notches to prevent the plunger from falling out as you're storing this thing upside down to load it. Um, because the, if the o-ring is in good shape, it should not fall out on its own, but this is a little extra insurance to make sure that doesn't happen, because if you damage that um, piston and its handle in any way, then the cell is, is no good. Alright, so that's loaded. The plunger, or the piston is in place. Um, the valve is open. Next we will pour the culture in, and you'll just want to pour it in about about 40 mils, I have it on the 40 mil setting in this video, um, will get you to within two to two and a half centimeters of the top or the bottom as it were. Okay, so that's full and the next is to uh, take the closure plug and you'll have to just press it in to close the cell, but when you do that, um, since the valve is unscrewed partially, some culture will likely come squirting out that um, outlet tube. So as I push the closure plug in, I keep a conical nearby. Um, and also this is a good control if you're just starting out on your protocol, you'll know what the bacteria were like uh, pre-lysis if you save this. It's a convenient way to save a control. Looks like there was a little bit of an overshot there. Um, most of you will be using BSL-1 level bacteria and for that we have both 70% ethanol and a bleach available in squirt bottles that you can use to clean up any spills that you have. And I'll show you how to clean up um, properly at the end of this video too. So the closure plug's on. If you have any trouble getting it on, you may have to press really hard. If the person before you hasn't cleaned it properly, the outlet tube can get clogged. But usually you just have to um, apply extra pressure and uh, that itself can clear the stoppage. Okay. Okay, now you can screw that valve stem all the way in until it's tight, not over tight, because that could cause that fresh ball bearing to get smushed again, um, but it does need to be closed enough that stuff won't squirt out. And you see another drop of bacteria came out when I tightened it fully. Okay, now we are ready to turn the thing on. There's a toggle switch in the front. Pop that up, um, and then uh, this platen or platform that will hold the cell um, will descend as long as the lever is pointed all the way to the left at the down position. Uh, it's usually all the way down when you turn the machine on, but I'm just illustrating here what it looks like. When it gets to the bottom of its trajectory, uh, you'll see the front gauge pop up to 500. You can change this setting with that pressure increase knob, but Jay Millies has found that 500 is really good for popping open cells, so we leave it there. And I'll talk more about those numbers while this thing is running. Okay, so grab hold of the cell firmly, keep your hand on the bottom um, as much as you can, and then place the assembled cell onto the platen. You want to push it back so that it is flush up against those three steel pegs, um, and then also rotate the safety bar into place and screw down the black thumb screws. Uh, at this point, also move the bar out of the notch um, on top of the cell that was holding it in place while it was upside down. And last but not least, uh, rotate the piston handle 
so that it's perpendicular to the screws at the very top of the machine that you can't see here. Um, but they must be perpendicular or else it will damage the handles. Um, while I was assembling it, I noticed that the valve wasn't quite sealed um, and a little bit squirted out of that outlet tube, so I'm just cleaning up a little bit right there with bleach again, or ethanol. All right, so um, also in that top drawer, there's a baggie of tubing, or a couple loose pieces of tubing, clear tubing. Um, grab one of those. They should all be clean if they're in the drawer, and um, attach it to the outlet tube. And that is where your cells will emerge. Then you also want to grab a beaker of ice and your collection tube for your lysed sample. And place the tube into the conical. All right, at this point, we're ready to turn it on. For this cell, a uh, one inch standard cell, you turn it to the high ratio setting and the platen will start to ascend. So I'm just adjusting the camera so you can see the top of the piston where the piston handle is, is headed up. Um, it will soon touch that top cylinder and that will start the pressure on the bacteria inside the cell. Uh, if the valve is all the way shut, nothing will come out. Um, so at this point, you have to just very gently open that valve screw just until you start to see um, your bacterial lysate flowing very slowly out the tube. The manual says about 15 drops per minute should be coming out of your tube. What you really want to pay attention to is the gauge pressure. It should remain at 500 while your sample is emerging. If it drops down, then part of your sample will be treated with a different pressure drop than other parts of your sample. Um, so it's best to go slow to be careful and keep the pressure in the cell. Um, but you will notice as the run continues, you may have to unscrew the valve a little bit more to keep the flow going. Um, so the glory of the pandemic is that you don't actually have to sit in the room with me and watch this thing drip for 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to give you a little sense of part of the run here. You saw me just now. I had to adjust the valve just a little bit more to keep the flow going, um, but not too much so it doesn't go too fast. The gauge is it's just out of frame, but you, it was staying at 500. Um, I think soon I'll zoom in a little bit so you can kind of get a sense of the drop rate um, that's dripping out of the tip of that tube. Um, and then for the remainder of this video, we'll speed it up <laughs> so that you don't actually have to um, watch this happen. Yeah, so here I'll pick up the tube and... Uh, the gauge pressure will remain at 500 psi if you're doing everything right. This corresponds to 7 to 8,000 psi, that, um, the pressure on the cells. And you can look in the manual if you want to look at the math to see how this calculation is made. Um, and there's a handy dandy conversion chart on the front of the machine as well. Um, this next section of the video is sped up so you can see the sample emerging faster and the platen rising faster. Uh, at some point the platen will stop and the sample will be all done and you can remove the tubing and put it in ethanol and then um, clean up after yourselves and that's it.